then before you can expect beta 2 into beta 1 or beta 3 adrenergic receptor spillover from clenbuterol or salbutamol, you probably have to ramp up the dosages a little bit higher than I just mentioned as well, unless you want to combine clenbuterol with mirabicron or salbutamol with mirabicron. And while we're on the subject, how does mirabicron compare to clenbuterol and salbutamol? Is it really superior when it comes to side effect free fat loss through the beta adrenergic receptors? Let's find out. I did all of the comparisons for you, so you don't have to. Regarding their clinical usage, mirabicron is used in the treatment of overactive bladder syndrome. Besides being used as a veterinary medication, clenbuterol is also used as a bronchodilator for asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and other respiratory conditions. And salbutamol is also used as a bronchodilator for asthma, bronchospasms, chron chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and other respiratory conditions. For these uh, clinical usages, the clinical dosages are as follows. Mirabicron is between 25 milligrams to 50 milligrams daily, but might be ramped up to 300 milligrams daily. Clenbuterol for humans is 20 micrograms to 80 micrograms daily in clinical settings. For salbutamol, when inhaled, that's 100 micrograms to 200 micrograms every four to six hours, with a maximum dose over the day of 800 micrograms. Oral usage is two to four milligrams three to four times daily, maximum eight milligrams total over the day. Intravenously, under medical conditions of hyperkalemia, for example, that's 250 micrograms to 500 micrograms as an initial bolus dose over a slow drip of five to 10 minutes, and then five micrograms to 20 micrograms per minute as a continuous uh, IV infusion. Subcutaneous, 250 micrograms every four to six hours at an unknown maximum dosage over the day. And intramuscular administrations is clinically not recommended, even though that's something we do with Super Shredder pre-workouts in special conditions when we want to go to town on the weights. Right? But that's not a medical condition. The half-life of Mirabicron is 50 hours. The half-life of Clenbuterol is between 36 to 48 hours. With salbutamol, when inhaled, is 3.8 to 6 hours. Oral, 5 to 7.2 hours. Oral extended release, 9.3 hours. Intervenous, 5.5 to 6.9 hours. And with subcutaneous or intermuscular administrations, the half-life is unknown. So proceed with caution. The beta-adrenergic receptor activation of mirabicron is solely on the beta-3s. Clenbuterol, that's beta-2 and beta-3s. And salbutamol is beta-1 and beta-2s. But when clenbuterol activates the beta-3s or salbutamol activates the beta-1, that's only weak activity and only observed at higher dosages. Let's get into that because that's sometimes what we're after, especially with clenbuterol. How much clenbuterol do I need to take to get overlap into the beta-3 adrenergic receptors and get activation of brown adipose tissue and improve overall fat loss? From all of the scientific literature that I can find in healthy individuals or asthma patients, it seems that beyond 80 micrograms clenbuterol onwards, the beta-2 adrenergic receptors are saturated and they're spillover into the beta-3 adrenergic receptors. And with salbutamol, it only seems to activate the beta-1 adrenergic receptors, not the beta-3 adrenergic receptors, which would otherwise stimulate additional fat loss by activating brown adipose tissue. So you only get an increase in heart rates, which could also result in enhanced fat loss, but not through the pathway you're actually after in this context. When salbutamol is inhaled beyond 800 micrograms to 1200 micrograms, daily spaced out over the day or taken orally over eight milligrams daily this activates the beta-1 adrenergic receptors increasing resting heart rate and heart rate during um, strenuous activity but not the beta-3 adrenergic receptor so in this context if you want beta-1 or beta-3 adrenergic receptor spillover from beta-2 receptors at higher dosages a clenbuterol wins yeah hands down and with that being said, if your body weight is a little bit higher than normal, which it probably is because you're into health and fitness, you're a bodybuilder or a fitness enthusiast or a strongman or powerlifter, you're probably way heavier than normal. Then before you can expect beta-2 into beta-1 or beta-3 adrenergic receptor spillover from clenbuterol or salbutamol, you probably have to ramp up the dosages a little bit higher than I just mentioned as well, unless you want to combine clenbuterol with mirabicron or salbutamol with mirabicron and then I would stick to these dosages because you get plenty of beta-3 adrenergic receptor activation from the mirabicron at, let's say, 50 milligrams to 150 milligrams 
over the day. So I would limit it. If you are crazy enough, I don't recommend this. I already tried this. We're going to discuss that a little bit later. If you're crazy enough to combine Climbuterol with Mirbicron, please limit yourself to 80 micrograms Climbuterol and, well, let's say up to 150 milligrams Mirbicron or 8 milligrams Solbutamol and 150 milligrams Mirbicron. We'll get into this a little bit later on. Don't you worry. But to quickly summarize, at higher dosages beyond 80 micrograms Climbuterol daily, it spills over into the beta-3 adrenergic receptors ultimately relaxing the bladder. Some of you guys might have experienced this from a certain dose of Climbuterol onwards, you pee less. And when you do pee, it's a lot of pee, right? So this is the spillover that occurs from the beta-2 into the beta-3, ultimately relaxing your bladder, allowing you to pee less, also resulting in a significant amount of fat loss through the beta-3 adrenergic receptors in adipose tissue. And some of you guys that experiment with solbutamol at higher dosages, let's say from eight milligrams onwards, you might notice that your resting heart rate and your heart rate during the workout is significantly increased beyond what you would expect from solbutamol by itself, right? Because now you get beta one and beta two adrenergic receptor activation and the heart rate goes up substantially, but probably not to the point that your heart rate goes up from a significant dose of clenbuterol. So pick your poison, I would say. Oh, and while we're on the topic, Clemitrol and Mirabicron don't seem to activate the beta-1 adrenergic receptors on the kidneys, shouldn't cause water retention, sodium retention, or any kind of modification of the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system, even though there are some instances where Mirabicron causes water retention, as we saw in the commonly occurring side effect being angioedema, right? So again, proceed with caution, do some research, know what you're getting yourself into. All right, back to the head-on-head -head comparison. The off-label usage for Mirabicron, Climbutrol, and Solbutamol is fat loss and potentially anabolism, even though the anabolic benefits haven't been established. When it comes to Mirabicron, there's still clear um, performance-enhancing benefits when it comes to Mirabicron, but with uh, Climbutrol and Solbutamol, that has been established. Climbutrol activates the beta-2 adrenergic receptors, raises cyclic adenosine monophosphate and IGF-1 levels, is even classified as an anabolic agent by the World Anti-Doping Agency. And again, Solbutamol has clear established anabolic benefits, activates the beta-2 adrenergic receptors, also raises cyclic adenosine monophosphate and IGF-1 levels. And it brings us to the common fat loss dosages. For Mirabicron, that's 50 milligrams per serving, 50 milligrams one hour pre-cardio, 50 milligrams one hour pre-workout or around the same time on rest days and 50 milligrams before bed, a total of 50 milligrams to 150 milligrams daily. With Climbutrol, that's 20 micrograms, one hour pre-cardio, one hour pre-workout, or around the same time on rest days, and 20 micrograms in between meals for a total of 20 micrograms to 120 micrograms daily, even though most guys kind of top out at 80 micrograms daily. Don't take Climbutrol before bed, your resting heart rate will be way too high and you wouldn't be able to sleep. And from all of the research that I've done, Climbutrol is potentially anabolic from 40 micrograms daily onward. So you don't have to go to 80 micrograms daily to get an anabolic benefit. At 40 micrograms daily, 20 micrograms before fasted cardio, and perhaps again, 20 micrograms before the workout later in the day, you might already start to experience anabolic benefits. Solbutamol, when taken orally, two milligrams, one hour pre-cardio, two milligrams, one hour pre-workout or around the same time on rest days, Two milligrams between meals, a total of two milligrams to 12 milligrams daily, even though most guys top out at six to eight milligrams solbutamol when taken orally daily. And intramuscularly, um, again, not clinically recommended, but also pleasurable, also fun when taken in injectable uh, pre-workout super shredder anabolic anonymous formulations. One milligram bilaterally, 30 minutes to one hour pre-workout. Once you train like that, you can train without it, unfortunately. And again, solbutamol from all of the research that I've done is potentially anabolic from four milligrams daily onward. So you don't have to take a lot of solbutamol to get an anabolic benefit or spill over into the beta-1 adrenergic receptors. Four milligrams already has anabolic potential. 